going to skip around a little bit. I'm going to do this really, really super quick, I think. Grace, what? One. Okay. I thought you said mm. Mm. Thought Yeah, we said the same thing. I'm like, what's mm. 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 what you said? You said mm. Sorry. You didn't realize you switched languages. Is it recording right now? Yeah, we're recording. My man. Come on. You got some shit. Come on. Oh. Mm. Praise the Lord. Um, I didn't want to be the first, so I, I kind of didn't uh, jump up first, but um, Pastor Dean, you suck my house, PD. Um, this is going to sound peculiar, but I think, um, I think I need to share it. Um, I think most of us remember the photograph of Emmett Till. Most of us know the stories about Sandra Bland, Eric Garner. In my heart, what I'm receiving from the Lord is that we are a peculiar people. He said that he would scatter us among the nations. Emmett Till. I want you to visualize that in your mind. Now replace that with Christ on the cross because what we see in the depictions on the movies is no, nothing similar to what they did to Christ on that cross. They beat him to a pulp. You couldn't recognize his face. And he did it for us. He received the beatings for us, for our healing, for our restoration. He shed his blood for us. And um, what I received is that in this season, Christ wants us to adorn our hearts like the people are adorning their households and their trees and their gifts. He wants to see our hearts adorned with the light of Christ in our hearts. And he sees us. And he wants us to continue that because he's going to do something miraculous in this season yes. for those who are waiting and saying, where's the justice, Lord? So just trust in the Lord in this season and know that he hears our cry. He has heard our petition and he sees our hearts and he's going to fill it and he's going to restore it. And he's going to use that light so that we can shine among the nations, and he's gonna rise up. Also what I received is to pray for this president. Pray for our leaders because he raised them up. God raises and God lowers people, and he does it for a reason and for a season. So no matter how peculiar it may look, pray for our leaders. Pray for every single leader because it's not about color. They say we are black people. We are not black people. We are children of the most high God. We have never identified ourselves in the Garden of Eden as black people, white people, Chinese people. We are children of the most high God. And so we, are, we have to identify and posture ourselves and allow God to do what he's going to do. This is a season of Gideon. He's going to show his hand mighty. He's going to show his hand mighty. But we have to realize that we have to posture ourselves to believe. And to receive what he has already accomplished, what he has already done. So when we when we see these peculiar things, we see these sad things, we cannot identify ourselves as a black people. We have to identify ourselves as children of the most high God. For then our petitions will be heard. Because he wants us humble. He don't want us prideful. He wants us humble so that we, he can uh, use us for his glory. And not for our own. Amen. 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 Excellent. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you sharing that. Let's be very wise to meditate on these things and to ponder them in our hearts as the Lord will bring uh, revelation and insight to that. Thank you for sharing that. Very powerful. Hallelujah. Luke 10. Ooh, glory to God. Verse number 1. 
It says this, now after this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them to, excuse me, sent them in pairs ahead of him to every city and place where he himself was going to come. Verse 2, and he was saying to them, the harvest is plentiful. I know the King James Version says the harvest is ripe. However, the laborers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go, behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money belt, no bag, no shoes, and greet no one on the way. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the house eating and drinking what, and, um, and drinking what they give you, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Let's move forward to verse 17. It says, The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Amen. And he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you nevertheless do not rejoice in this that your names are written in uh where am I? you looked at me you made me lose my train of thought <laughs> thank you nevertheless do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven Verse 21, at the very same time, he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Ghost and said, I praise you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this way was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the, Father, who the Son is except the Father, and the Father except the Son, and to anyone whom the Son wills to reveal him. Father, please help us in the name of Jesus. All right, we're talking about the harvest. Listen, 2020, this is going to be um, probably a world record for me um, in messages, hopefully. Um, but then again, <laughs> you know me. Um, there's an idea of the harvest. There was a little song that we have been, we were kind of meditating on, and we're vibing out to before uh, service, our gathering started. And I want to talk about the harvest because this upcoming year, I don't normally do like this is a message for the year, but... This was something that's been on my heart, and we talked about 2020, how it's a year of clarity. There's two things that I see for it. Um, one, definitely, we affirm and we concur with what uh, our, um, you know, dare I say, our spiritual upline uh, has stated, um, being that it's a season uh, of time of strategies and really to, um, to receive and to walk in the fullness of those things. We affirm that. Um, one of the things that I've also kind of, Every, and we're talking about seeing 2020. It's about seeing, right? 2020 vision. It's a lot about vision. And I want to talk about this very briefly because I want to give us a, a uh, snapshot, I believe, of what this upcoming year is upholding for us. Hallelujah. Um, this idea of seeing, first of all, one of the things the Lord showed me, uh, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, I would say not Debbie Downer, but Danny Downer, um, is that when you see 2020, of course we see the vision, but think about it as, Lord will show me it's going to be a, a year of dive vision. Um, or division. Something that, from a prophetic standpoint, I don't want to scare you. I know we're going to have the good stuff in a little bit, but let me get through the, the tense things that there is a season and a time of division. Mm -hmm. Division that is going to, I believe that is going to happen. Um, I think that what we're seeing on the political front is a in the body of Christ. Yes. I'm talking about in the body of Christ. Um uh, what we're talking about the political front is a is an instance of what I think is a spiritual reality. Um, 
And as a result, there's going to be having to be a, a separating of what is not right or wrong, but there's just going to be a separation between what is God doing and what we want. That's the one. It's already started. Really. Truly. It's in baby steps. It's already oh, yes. <coughs> it has occurred. Yeah. And I think it's going to be even more amplified. And so when we talk about vision and things like that, the first thing that I was saying was just the vision. And we have to be <laughs> on the Lord's side. Mm-hmm. And all that we do. Uh, Timothy Wright, the late Timothy Wright had a song. He says, get up. <laughs> If you're on the Lord's side <laughs> and you say, I'm on, I'm on the Lord's side. Yeah, the most simple songs, yes, but they were very powerful. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so we got to know that. So, okay, that's the first thing, division. So we have to be aware of that. And so the word of God tells us that Christ is not divided. Amen. Amen. Christ is not divided. And we have to make sure that whether it be politically, whether it be denominationally, whatever it is, it doesn't matter that we we represent Christ. I don't represent a political party. I don't represent a mantra, uh, denomination. I rep- we represent Jesus. We are the body Amen. of Christ. And if we're going to do the work of the Lord, then we have to be firm in knowing that we are doing what God has called us to do. 2020, you got to be sure this is what God has called me to do. Yes. This is no longer be a time for you to... To, to just guess. play the game and guess, the right? We got to uh, get in the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have to do what the Lord has called us to do. And because of you seeking to do what God has called you to do, it will often cause people to not want to connect or not want to mm-hmm. continue their relationship with you. Come on, sir. Yes. However, we have to be strong in knowing that, that when you seek the Lord's vision, and you follow what the Lord is asking you to do, it's going to put you in some precarious places. It's going to cause you to encounter people whom you thought were friends that uh, aren't so friendly any longer. And you knew it. <laughs> right. But also at the same time, it's going to put you in front of new people and new opportunities and new connections and new relationships that will allow you to experience and to manifest what God has ordained for your life and what he's calling you to do to reflect this season. Hallelujah. Um, and, and I really want to say this, and, and I believe this, and, and, I, and I concur with this 125%, that this is going to be a season of your harvest. Uh, if I were to put a, 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 theme, a thematic thrust on this upcoming year, um, it wouldn't be vision. It would really be about the harvest. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. Because I believe that, that this is going to be a season in your life, hear what I'm telling you, where you are going to begin to receive and to gather what is for your life. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about these prophetic promises that have been ordained over your life, that have been spoken, that you've been believing God for, that you have been praying about, that you have been frustrated about, that you have been uh, marinating in for years, maybe even decades. I believe that this is going to be a season and a time where the harvest that God has ordained for your life will be gathered. Thank you, Lord. I'm talking about in all things. Oh, yes, Lord. Come on. Of course, we know that we are believing God for in our church and his ministry. We're believing God for a significant spiritual harvest of born again people, people being born again. You know, we've got our man on the moon uh, objective where we're going to have 1000 people born again. Hallelujah. To see that and be responsible for that from our efforts and from our initiatives. That's something that we're believing God for and that we are. I already know that it's already available. It's already out there. That's a part of the harvest. We're also believing God for some other stuff. But also in the same time, I'm believing God for your family. Harvest in your family. I'm believing God for harvest in your relationships. Hallelujah. Harvest in righteous relationships and relationships where God is ordained and that God has established and family and things that and these 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 relationships that are around us that are weak. And I'm telling you that God is going to 
give a harvest in those things. I'm just making some prophetic declarations today right now. And, and I'm believing, God, there's a harvest on your money. Can I say this to you? Amen. I got to let you know this, yeah. that there is a financial harvest that also is going to be coming to your life. I'm telling you that there is a harvest. I'm telling you, listen to me, that this harvest that God is sending you is that he's making available for you is going to blow your mind. Hallelujah. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. The harvest is going to blow our minds. But watch this. So, so there's a financial harvest. There's a relationship harvest. Come on. I, I'm believing God for that one. Hallelujah. Um, even, even, with, even with my son. Glory to God. I, I'm Come believing on. God for a greater harvest in that, in that regard. I'm Amen. believing God even for you and for your children. I'm believing God um, that this harvest, I'm telling you, it's going to be the promises. Even the, be yes, Lord. Even those things. And listen to me very closely. More specifically, those prophetic promises that are over your life. Some of us have words that we have been sitting on, that we have been meditating on. Some of us have things that God has said, you're going to do this, you're going to yes. go here, you're going to experience right. this. I'm telling you that this is a season, this is a divine moment. I see the waters trembling in heaven. I see uh, uh, the, 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 the God just stirring up some stuff for you to be able to walk in and to receive exactly what has been prophesied over your life. Somebody say the harvest. The harvest. Come on, say that you had breakfast this morning. The harvest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The harvest. So your harvest, and I got to repeat after the song, but the harvest is on the way. <laughs> that your harvest is on the way. It is in root, and God has it for you. Now listen, according to this prophetic scripture that we just looked at in Luke chapter 10, verse number 1, the Lord told the people, oh yes, that what precedes the harvest is Jesus' presence. Amen. <laughs> he said, listen, I want to send you out to everywhere that I am going to go. He says, you guys are going to be my forerunners. Y'all going to be my promote team, my, my street team. Y'all going to be the people who go before me. Listen, y'all going to say, listen, Jesus is coming. Y'all got to get ready. Bring your mama out. Bring your grandma. Listen, if you sick, whatever, bring them out. In the words of, I forget who said it, but uh, I think it was Jay-Z. Thank you. He said, bring them out, bring them out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what Jesus is telling the people, the, the, the disciples. These are the 70 who he sends. He says, tell the people to come on out because Jesus is coming. Now, because Jesus is coming, this means that the kingdom of God is coming and it is arriving in their midst. Now, why is this important? It's important because Jesus is telling these people that your job, now we're talking about the gospel still, is to bring the gospel, hallelujah, to let them know that the gospel is coming. Now, wherever the gospel is, there has got to be a harvest. Hallelujah. Yes. You got to hear what I'm telling you. So this kingdom message that these disciples were preaching was the proof and the and the and the and the promise that a harvest, that something significant and something supernatural was going to proceed. It. So the presence of Jesus press, press, uh, precludes, oh no, am I saying the right word? Not precludes, but precedes. The presence of Jesus. Too many P's, it's alliteration. <laughs> the presence of Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Proceed. Pre precedes. Yes. Precedes. Mm -hmm. The prophetic fulfillment of the harvest. There you go. Amen. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we can understand is that wherever you sense the presence of Jesus in your life, that also means that there's grounds for harvest. The presence of Jesus, hallelujah, and the promotion of Christ brings the right and the privilege for harvest. Can I suggest to you that one of the other benefits and the fruit of this gospel message that we preach is that it also comes with harvest. When this gospel of the kingdom of God is preached, I notice Jesus, uh, he tells his disciples to go out. He says, don't take no money. Don't take no, no, no shoes, no bags. He says, don't take none of that. I just want you to go and to preach the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. and, in re and when you do that, <clears throat> When you do that, you will find that there will be places of harvest for you. You will have your needs met when you preach the kingdom of God. Now, this is so funny because he's telling them that if you preach the kingdom, that you will harvest what you need. 
When you go and preach the gospel, you will have everything. This reminds me of what he said in Matthew 6, 33. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. That when we preach this gospel message of the kingdom of God, we have the ability to receive and to extract harvest in that place. I'm, I'm telling you this because you have to then sense two things. One, where am I going? And two, is Jesus' presence here? Is the message of Christ here? Is the fragrance, as Pastor Dean was talking about, is the fragrance of Christ here in this place? Because if it is, then I can pull a harvest out. Because Jesus, thank you, Lord, the kingdom comes with harvest. You have to understand this. The kingdom comes with harvest. The kingdom of God comes with harvest. Jesus says this, verse number two. He says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Several things I want to point here. First of all, that the harvest is already established. That's an opportunity for you to get excited. The harvest is already established. It's already waiting for you. It's already grown. It's already there. But all that needs to happen are for people to go and to get. Yes, this is where it gets good for me. Because... Your, your, your promise, it's already done. Yes. Oh, man, let me help you. Your, your money, <laughs> it's already done. It's already set. It's already laid aside. It's already accounted for. It's the things that God has called for your life, the things that belong in this kingdom correlation are already established. The problem is, is that there are no people who want to harvest it. Oh, man. Because the laborers, what does this mean, Jesus? You're telling me that Jesus is saying that there's so many souls out there that are, first of all, primarily he's saying that there's so many people whose souls are out there that are saved, that, that Jesus wants to save, that he's already set aside to be saved. If this is talking about salvation, this means that there are people whom Jesus has already ordained and wanted to be saved and names should be written in the Lamb's Book of Life already. But because the harborers, harborers, laborers are few, that harvest remains ungathered. Man, wouldn't it be crazy if the people that you sit by on the train, mm -hmm. none of y'all ride the train here, the people that you, uh, <laughs> train me, and, me and Jason, only was there train riders here. Um, you drive by it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that okay, it. man. Y'all just ruined it. It's not relevant. It's not relevant, you know. <clears throat> that you about to cuss out and try? Yeah, oh, yeah, that you've already cussed out. <laughs> right? Man, what if those people were part of the harvest? Mm. What if the people that we look by and we just shake our head in disgust and say, mm, mm, mm. a part of the harvest. What if God has already set those people aside? What, oh man, what if the people who you think are not, are the least likely to be saved are the ones that God has already listed into his harvest? Mm -hmm. But because we won't go out and get it, they remain ungathered. Jesus has this from, he says, I got so much harvest that I want to release into the world, but I don't have enough people to go and get it. 2020 is a year, not where we make things happen. It's a year where we go and get what has already happened. It's not, we don't see, when we talk about these a thousand people saved, we don't gotta, we don't gotta, we don't have to make them get saved. We just have to help them understand that what Jesus has already done for them and that they already. Ephesians <laughs> 1. I gotta be careful here because I'm not talking inclusion, but I'm talking that God has ordained from the foundation of the world yes. for whom should be saved. You get very tricky there. You talk about inclusion. Like, everybody's saved. I'm like, ah, to a degree, ah. <laughs> Kind of, but not really. <laughs> that, 
They need to know. They still have to have in covenant. They still have to have covenant relationship with Christ. But that's the that's the that's the this example of the I'm pointing. I see stuff, but there's nothing on the board. I'm like, what is he pointing at? It's like <laughs> I didn't write it yet, but it's like I, it. I, I see it. it. Okay. We see it. We got yeah. vision. Y'all got vision. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The harvest is already gathered. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is our job to go and get it. 2020, I'm telling you, this is the year God is telling you, you have to go and get it. And whatever he's planning for your life, you have to go and get it. Yes. Whatever he's made you aware of, you have to go and get it. Now, here's what's important. That this harvest, watch this. Now, your joy comes upon your gathering. There is an added joy that comes upon your harvest. You're having, you're, ah. You're gathering. Verse 17. The verse Bible says, The 70 return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Can I tell you this? That there are demons. Mm. See, the, part, the reason why the laborers are few, let me tell you why the laborers are few, is because one of the reasons is, is because it takes work. Mm -hmm. Nobody want to work? Mm -hmm. Come on, Izzy brothers. I got work to do. <laughs> Taking care of business. Woman, can't you see? <laughs> got to make it for you. I got to make it for me. <laughs> I know sometimes it seems I'm neglecting you, but it takes a lot of money to make it. You know? He says, I got work to do. Y'all know that song? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's my jam. <laughs> I got work to do. Yes. Yeah, that's the record right there. But it takes work. Laboring takes work. This means that this year, see people see when they see the harvest, they think I'm just gonna sit back. And it's about the whew, it's coming to me, checking the mail anointing. <laughs> we don't want to do nothing we just want to sit back and get this check in the mail thank God for checks in the mail but that's not the primary way that God wants to release the harvest in your life I mean I will take you Lord if it be your will you know whatever you want to do I receive it I receive checks in the mail but let me tell you something but this harvest requires work he says, pray that the Lord of the harvest sends laborers into his harvest. So there has to be work involved. Now, work implies that there is effort, there is energy. It also implies that there are things preventing. Resistance? I would have been a better way to say it. <laughs> Resistance. Resistance. There are things that want you not to get to harvest. That's just so much better way to put it. I couldn't, I couldn't have said it better, Brother Carrington. <laughs> Come on, what does 7 of 9 say? Right? So the reason why you got to work is because there is resistance to your harvest. Right? So you got to figure out a way to overcome the resistance. Nobody wants to deal with the resistance. Nobody wants to deal with the struggle. You see, we think harvest, we say, yes. It's already done. It is done, but there is resistance. How do we know? Because Jesus says that the demons, oh, I'm sorry, verse 17 says, the 70 return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. In other words, that this harvest was a, could only happen when there was spiritual, or better yet, when there was deliverance pertaining to things of the harvest. In other words, there are, this resistance is spiritual. Oh, man. Talk about it. This resistance is spiritual. This resistance is spiritual. This means that there are demonic influences whose job is to keep you from the harvest, is to keep the harvest locked up, is to keep the harvest from reaching to you, from you being able to touch and to effectively gather what God has established. This is why the promises seem so challenging at times. 
It's not because it's not for you. It's because the resistance of the enemy and of this demonic structure and system and this network, because y'all know it's a bunch of demons. It's not just one kind of demon. It's multiple kinds of demons. So it's a network of demons. That's why I call it a demonic structure. That some Because if they can't work on your body, they'll work on your mind. If they can't work on your mind, they're going to get to your family. If they can't get to your family, thank you. They're going to get to your money. It's demons that's going to be for your foot. It's the demon for your knee. I'm telling you, that these these devils <laughs> You're saying the truth. <laughs> have a network of things that are designed to keep you from reaching the harvest that God has called you to. Come on, even on your money, even on your finances, even in people around you, even in regions, there are demons over regions that rule regions. So we have to deal with this kind of resistance. And so to labor means I got to go out and get it. I got to put in the work. <coughs> I want you to consider and contemplate what God has already ordained and established for your life. The promises that you're believing God for. When I told you that the harvest was connected to the kingdom, I want you to think of those things that came to your mind. What did you see? What did you sense the Holy Spirit prompting in your imagination when we talked about that? Was it a nice, beautiful, peaceful home? Was it a, a, a nice very plump bank account? Was it your ministry that God has called you to and birthed you for? I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, I want you to get that into your mind. But I also want you to realize while you have it in your mind, what could be in front of that? Mm. Here's why this is powerful. Because the word of God says that they came back with joy. When they realized that the demons were subject to them in his name. Yes. I want to tell you this, that not only is this going to be a year of harvest for you, but this is going to be a year of greater joy. Amen. Because some of us have been believing God for this for so long. Mm. And we've been working for so long. Mm. Because there's been so much of this. Mm. But I'm telling Ooh. you that God is getting ready to Come on. remove the resistance in your life. Dance right there. Yeah, you could have. That was the cue. <laughs> He's getting ready to remove the resistance in your life. So all you got to do is just secure the bag. I love it. As we would say in the streets. Here's why. Because it is in his name. In his name, the name of Christ, we have authority and power. Let's read what Jesus says. He said, I don't believe me. He says this in verse 18. And he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing will injure you. <laughs> so Jesus has said, no matter what the obstacle or the resistance that's in front of you, he says, I'm giving you power this year. And I want you to know this year. I need you to go into this year really feeling empowered yeah, because you yeah. are about to have everything you need to conquer whatever resistance is keeping you from your promise. Whatever is keeping you from your harvest, I'm prophetically declaring to you that Jesus is equipping you and he's giving you the strength and the ability to go and grab what belongs to you in this season. What he's already set aside for you in this season. Let me tell you something. God would not be so cruel to set aside miracles and power and strength and opportunity for you and, not, and let the devil keep you from getting it. Amen. That would be so cruel, right? Uh, uh, he said, I was like, all this greatness for you, but you can't get it because of the resistance. But I'm telling you, Jesus is saying that he has given you, hallelujah, the power and the authority and the ability to tread on everything that is going to stop you. I'm declaring to you in 2020 that these, hunder, these hindrances that have kept you bound, that these challenges that have limited you, those things that come up that keep pushing you back and pushing you back, 
and causing you to start over. I'm declaring to you right now that you're not going to have those blockages anymore, but God is giving you power to tread over it. We're getting ready to walk over oppression and depression this year. We're getting ready to move ahead and to move greater than whatever the enemy is doing because he has given us power in his name. I'm telling you that your harvest is on the way and it's going to be a season of great joy. It's going to be a season of recompense because we've been carrying this thing for so long. You've been working this thing for so long. You've been believing for years. You've been believing when you should have given up hope and people around you saying, are you still believing God for that? But I'm telling you there's going to be joy because you're about to see the harvest. You're about to see what you've been working for. You're about to hold in your hands the very thing that you've sought after God for. Amen. Friends and family, this all is a matter of you going for it. Mm -hmm. Your harvest is already set aside. You got to go for it. And here's the last thing. These are just some notes. This is not like a preacher thing. I'm just trying to give you some things. I want to encourage you. Hallelujah. Watch this. This is all based off of what you can see. No one pursues something they cannot see. No one, when I say see, I'm talking about literally and figuratively. No one pursues something that they don't have vision for. The harvest that God has for you requires you to have vision. Because, let me show you what Jesus said. <laughs> he said in verse 24, turning to his disciples, he said privately, excuse me, verse 23, he said privately to his disciples, blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I say to you that many prophets and kings wish to see the things which you see mm. and did not see them wow. and hear the things which you hear wow. and did not hear them. I'm telling you that your harvest is connected to your ability to see. What do you mean see? I mean your ability to have vision. Your ability to hear. And the only way you can get that is through hearing what God has said. Well, this is just faith articulated because we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, faith is a vision. Faith is a way for us to see. Faith is how we see in the kingdom, the most optimal way to see in the kingdom. So when I hear what God or experience what God is saying, then I'm seeing something. I'm seeing what God is doing. I'm seeing what God has for my family. I'm seeing my harvest. It's only revealed to you unless somebody, unless you hear it. You don't know there's a harvest for you unless you heard it. And so it's your ability to hear and to see what God has for you. And so if you cannot see it, then you cannot go work for it. And if you can't work for it, you'll never be able to grab it and put it in the bag of your life and for your futures. And what I'm trying to tell us today is that there is a harvest on the way. There is a harvest on the way that God has given you and God has put some things out for you to grab and to get, but you need to see it. I know that sometimes it's hard to see it because you have tried to see it before and you can never grab it. I know sometimes it's challenging because it's like, well, man, I tried this 25 years ago, but it didn't work out then. But I'm telling you right now that your ability to see, which is also why this 2020 thing is important with the harvest, because you got to see clearly and in order for you to be able to reach and to receive what heaven has for you. If you cannot see clearly, if you cannot touch, and if you cannot articulate what God is doing in your life, then you cannot have a harvest. Harvest comes by faith. Harvest is for hearing. Harvest is for hearers. And so I hear what God is saying when I'm praying. I hear what God, the Holy Spirit is putting in my spirit when I'm reading the word. I hear it and I see it. And because of that, then I can work for it. I'm telling you this, church, that God is trying to let us know that this season coming up, you gotta have your eyes wide open. You gotta have your ears open because he's trying to release to you this harvest. Your harvest, I'm telling you, do you come on, I think the song is the Christmas record. Do you hear what I hear? Yes. 
Do you hear what I hear? I really want to ask you the question today. Do you hear it? Because if you can hear it, you can harvest it. And God has saying, if you can hear my words, I will make your way clear. I will bring relationships to you. I will bring uh, connections to you. And I will give you authority over demonic systems that have tried to resist you because you heard the harvest. I'm telling you right now, church, we heard it when he said a thousand people because there's a harvest. You see, he would not, we could not have faith for it if we didn't hear it but because we hear it we can have faith for it and we can work for it and he's going to give us power to rise above the resistance what about you what are you hearing what has God spoken over your life what are you believing God for what has he placed in your spirit for 2020 I'm telling you keep your eyes open keep your ears open and keep your prayer mind straight hallelujah let's stand hallelujah. come on let's stand I'm done Amen. glory to God hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, we coming up in 2020. We coming up this year. We coming up this year. <laughs> we coming up this year. This song says there's a harvest on the way. <laughs> there's a little ditty. There's a little ditty. It's a little song. It's very simple. It's another church, but I really want you to get this in your heart today. That there's a harvest on the way. There's a harvest on the way for your family. Thank you, Jesus. There's a harvest on the way in your career. There's a harvest on your, in the way for your destiny. I need you to believe it and receive it this morning. There's a harvest on the way. Come on, can you say that there's a harvest on the way? Come on, say it prophetically. There's a harvest on the way. I don't care what the devil says. There's a harvest on the way. I don't care what my bank account looks like. There's a harvest on the way. Hallelujah. Come on. There's a harvest on the way. That's it. There's a harvest on the way. Come on. There's a harvest on the way. There's a harvest on the way. Come on. I need you to see it. 2020, my harvest is coming to me. Come on. My harvest is coming to me. Yes, Lord. Everything I believe God for is coming to me. I need you to see it in the spirit, church. I need you to see yourself walking on top of devils. Breaking through resistance. Hallelujah. Come on. Patterns and generational blockades that have tried to keep you. We, we declare right now that you have freedom. That God is putting you over it now. Whoa, yes, Lord. Come on. We curse these resistances in the name of Jesus. We curse these networks that are trying to keep you from your harvest. We curse these devils and these demons that will try to keep you and keep your hands from it. Hallelujah, devil, we're coming in the name of Jesus. Every spirit, come on, financial spirits of lack and poverty, we're coming for it. Hallelujah, harvest in our health. Every demon that will try to hinder our health, we're coming for our health. In the name of Jesus, there's a harvest on the way. Thank you for healing, a harvest of healing, a harvest of healing, a harvest of deliverance. Hallelujah, come on, healing is coming. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Healing is coming to your mind, to your body. Come on, blood pressure. We curse hypertension in the name of Jesus. Come on, there's a harvest. There's a harvest. Diabetes. We curse it in the name of Jesus. Come on, there's a harvest on the way. There's a harvest on the way. Come on, you got to get it in your spirit, church. I'm not trying to get you hyped. I'm trying to get you focused so that you can see clearly. So that you can see clearly what God has for you. So you can know that God is positioning you to go and get it. Come on, come on. Let the Lord know. Say, Lord, I'm a laborer. Somebody say, I'm a laborer. I'm a laborer. I'm a laborer. Because every harvest needs a laborer. We love you, Jesus. We love you. There's a harvest on the way. I can listen to this all day. Come on, come on. There's a harvest on the way. <laughs> we love you, Jesus. Come on, we declare it right now. We declare it right now. This is my time. This is your time. Hallelujah for breakthrough, for victory. There's a harvest on the way for you right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, church. Come on, let's begin to worship God. I mean, even the queen right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing something more than 70, sir. I'm seeing something. There was a, there was a, 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 a distinct calling on your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You felt like it slipped out of your hands. You felt like it may have passed you by. There were things spoken over your life that have yet to come to pass. But I see the Lord bringing it back to you. I see the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I see the mantle coming back over your life. Hallelujah. The Lord says that. 
that what is promised is still legitimate for your life. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. I dear Lord. Hallelujah. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, even the ministry that was over you, that you were walking into, that you were identified for. He said that there were no mistakes that could keep you from it. There were no blockages that could keep you from it. There were no holdups that could keep you from it. Hallelujah. But the Lord says, in this season, man of God, that there is indeed a harvest on the way. He says that your faithfulness, your loyalty, yes, Lord, he says, even your, your honor to your mother, he says it prolongs your life. The Lord says, honor your father and your mother, for it is the first promise, with uh, the first commandment with promise. The Lord says that how you dealt with your mother, he says it's going to be the reason why you're able to walk in these things that he's declared over you. Yes, Lord. Man of God, he says that there's a prophetic word. Oh, yes, Lord, a windfall coming over you. He says there's an overflow coming over you, man of God. He says that the words are going to begin to flow out of you. I'm seeing like Niagara Falls. You're going to receive it in the spirit, and you're just going to begin to spew it. Hey, yes, Lord. The Lord says there is breakthrough and there's victory. There's deliverance in your mouth. There is healing. In your yeah, 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 yeah. I see keys. He says when you speak this, to unlock a soul, to unlock a future, hallelujah, to bring liberty and freedom to where the devil has tried to stop and he's tried to hinder. Man of God, there's a harvest on the way. The harvest on the way, man of God. This harvest, hallelujah, it's for you. God says it's been waiting. Oh, he says I'm strengthening your life. He says I'm giving you strength right now. He says, uh, yes, Lord, we curse all disease, all sickness that is trying to take you before your harvest. We release you right now, man of God, into laboring. We release you right now, man of God, into the field, into the harvest of the field that God has called you to. The Lord says, man of God, hallelujah. He says that your eye is keen, that your heart is pure. Glory to God. And that he's giving you right now hands together. He's giving you hands together. He's giving you hands together. And oh, yes, Lord. He says not only that, but even family. You're gathering for family as you gather in the spirit. Come on, church. Come on, church. Let's praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, I'm a laborer. I'm a laborer. I'm a laborer in the harvest. I'm a laborer in the harvest, God. I'm a laborer in the harvest, God. We sign up for 2020. We sign up for the future that you've called us to. We sign up for the destiny that you've placed over our lives, God. We sign up for the promises for what's available for us, for our families, God. Lord, we lift our hands to receive honors for families, for our children, God, for our nieces and nephews, for our brothers and sisters, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for the spirit of laborers, not in laboring in vain, but laboring with the Lord, laboring by grace through faith so that we can receive this harvest that you have for us. Oh, yes, Lord. Come on. Because my harvest on the way. That's my harvest on the way. Yes, Lord. That's my harvest on the way. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, shine I pick on you every week. Oh, but the Lord says, woman of God, that even friends. I'm seeing the Lord giving you. I, I see you. I see you in, in, not that you don't know people, but I feel like you don't give your heart easily. I feel like you don't, you don't, you're not really intimate on a, on a, on a level. And God is saying that, that, that he's going to send you people in this season. He's going to send you people, hallelujah, in your life that can speak to your destiny, that will relate to your destiny, that won't be embarrassed or that won't be ashamed or, or try to sabotage you. I'm seeing right now that the Lord is giving you, this may sound lame, but he's giving you real, true friends in the season. The Lord says that I'm giving you friends, friends, not just in name, but I'm giving you friends who will be able to lift you up, who will be able to walk with you and to travel with you in the spirit. God says friends, relationships are coming to you in this season. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. 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 Oh, God, I see you. The Lord says you're like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> the Lord says that you're about to 
the seed. Yes, yes, yes. He says that your that your that your foolish not the negative way. Your foolish uh, uh, heart and spirit. Yes, Lord, for the promises of God. He says, yes, Lord. He says sometimes you've not known the way. He says many times you've not known how to acquire it or which way to turn or, or how to do it the right way in protocol. The Lord says because you want to do things the way by the book and you've not known how to often. You've been like, Lord, what do I do now, Lord? How do I do this, Lord? Where do I go? I don't know any way but forward. But the Lord says in this season that you're going to run into it. Hallelujah. He says that you're going to run into the promises and the blessings that you've been believing God for. The Lord says if you keep going, hallelujah, if you keep moving, if you keep searching, hallelujah, the Lord says it's going to hit you. It's going to hit you. You're going to run into it like a brick wall. Hallelujah. He says you may not have known the way, but you will know when you get there. You will know when you arrive. The Lord says that you are on the pathway. Hallelujah. That I've placed you in. He says I have confused your path. I've made you one rocket almost in circles, almost in serpentine patterns. But the Lord is saying that I'm leading you in a new direction. I'm leading you into a way that will not correlate with your mind. He says because you cannot be ruled by your mind, but you must be ruled by the spirit. You must be driven by the spirit. And he says I've caused you to lose your mind so you can find your destiny, so you can find your promise, so that you can find your harvest. I declare to you, woman of God, that in the season, hallelujah, your mind is stable. You're not losing your mind. You're not losing hope. You're not going crazy. But God is saying, I'm pushing you into your destiny. I'm pushing you into your future, into your promise. He says, you're getting ready to run into it like a brick wall. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout to God. Somebody shout to God. Come on, somebody shout to God.
for you. I see a new identification coming for you. I see a new spirit all over your life, man of God. I see God lifting you up. I see God raising you up. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see God, yes, yes, yes. Oh my God, yes, Lord, hallelujah. I see God uh, bringing, bringing correction to those things and those areas in your life of deformity, of emotionally. God says, I'm bringing correction to you. I'm bringing correction to you. Uh, not in a negative way, in a loving way, to lift you up. Oh, yes, Lord. The Lord says, in this time, you gotta walk tall. You gotta walk tall. You gotta walk free. Oh yes, Lord, you gotta have real joy. The Lord says no more fake joy, but real joy. He says you've tried it, you pushed your way for joy. He says, but not anymore. He's gonna stir up within you a new joy that you don't gotta work for, you don't gotta struggle for, you don't gotta strain for it, you don't gotta earn it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't gotta earn it, you don't gotta prove it. God says a new joy is coming over you. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. The joy of the Lord, hallelujah. The oil of gladness over your life, man of God. And just symbolically, we just release the oil of gladness over your life. Hallelujah, we curse the anxiety and even that depression that will try to kick in as you try to navigate to destiny. But the joy of the Lord, the oil of gladness is coming over your life. And it's, oh yes, Lord, it's going to remove it. So those things trying to hold on to you, those, those struggles, those, those demonic networks that have tried to harass you, hallelujah, most of your life. God says they're not going to be able to grab you anymore. He says the oil is coming over your life. They won't be able to claim you. They won't be able to reach you because of this oil over your life. I see you like a man of gold. The Lord is totally drenching you right now. He's totally drenching you right now from the head of your top of your head to the soles of your feet. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, glory to God. The Lord says it's going to harden you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's going to harden you. He says those, those attacks now, they're going to bounce off. They're not going to stick anymore. They're not going to stick anymore. They're not going to attack you. They're not going to penetrate you any longer. But the Lord says that they're going to, they're going to bounce off of you and break. No weapon for Man, you gotta grab it, bro. You gotta grab it, bro. You gotta grab this season, man of God. Oh, you gotta grab this season, man of God. You gotta grab this moment and this time, sir. Oh, yes, Lord. I see God opening a destiny pathway for you. Oh, yes, Lord. Even in this moment right now, I see a window coming for you right now, sir. The Lord says you have this like a cycle, you have to wait. You have to wait until it comes back around. I see this as a season and a time right now where God is giving you another opportunity and another time. He says he's coming back around. He's coming back around. And he says if you jump on board, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord, if you jump on board, sir. Come on, I'm seeing the window coming for you, sir. I'm seeing the window coming for you. Oh, yes, Lord, the window is coming for you. The window is coming for you, man of God. The window is coming for you, man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let's worship God. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. Oh, there's a harvest on the way. There's a harvest on the way. There's a harvest on the way. <laughs> yes, Lord. Come on. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. Listen, I can listen to this all day. We got to turn this on. Hallelujah. Listen. Oh, Jesus. Father, we thank you right now that your presence is here. That your spirit is here. That victory is here. Yes, Lord, that healing is here. Come on, overcoming is here. We thank you right now. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes. Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes.
the Word of God. Whatever house you enter, first say,
plugs into her as the people who listen to her, as they follow her, as she journeys to the God, that they will train her, God, that they will not train her, we curse that in the name of Jesus. You will not be trained, you will not feel like you will not go to it. But the Lord says he will renew your strength. Yes, he will yes. renew your strength. He will renew your yes. strength. So we pray for renewed strength in this season, God. Renewed strength for her to labor, God. Yes, Lord, renew strength for her to possess and to begin to declare. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, even in her lungs, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for strength right now. Yes, Lord, those things that are weak right now, God, we declare strength in the name of Jesus. thank you, Lord, for the words of wisdom that you have given to his heart, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the, the, the promises that you have given him, Father God, the harvest that you have given our pastor, Father God. We know, Lord, that uh, when I sense pastor, Father God, pastor, the Lord is saying, I see what you're doing. You don't need to boast. I got you. I see you. Wait on me. Wait on me. I will open the door for you. I will open the door for you. Keep yourself humble. For I have many doors to open for you. You're going to raise up leaders. To shine the, the proclamation of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus Christ. Wait upon me. Trust in me. Declare my word. Declare my word. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord Father God, we thank you for each and every person here. But right now, we're praying, Lord, for the circle right now of men. Just to multiply us, Father God. Raise up leaders. Raise us up, Lord, Lord Father God. Humble our hearts. Fill us. Replace what we thought we knew. Replace our knowledge. Give us our spiritual knowledge, Father God. Give us spiritual wisdom to understand the movings and your discernment, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for what you have for us, what you have for this house. We thank you, Lord, for the Christians, Father God. Father, I'll be remiss, Pastor, not to say this, Pastor Dean, but I see a rainbow and the promise of the rainbow after the flood that there was going to be a new start, a new start for the Christians, the Christians. And Lord, Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the Lord is saying he's sprouting up a new thing in your life for your household. It's going to be a new sprouting and people are going to see what he has done for you because you have opened your house. 
You have opened your heart. You have opened everything to him. And he is sprouting a new thing and a new promise. And it will shoot and it shall come to pass. All of these things that were said shall come to pass. The Lord, the Lord will open these doors, Pastor. And he will multiply the men in this house. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you so much, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you for the harvest that's on the way. Hallelujah. We, we receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Is heaven already have it? We stepping in 2020, getting it on earth. Hallelujah. It's not our will, but his will. Hallelujah. It's done. Yeah, it's already done, so yeah. we just gotta step in. That's what the message was. And the Holy Spirit said, My will be done. Hallelujah. So let's Jesus. just step in and let his will be done. It's done. Hallelujah. It's signed, sealed, and delivered. Hallelujah. So we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on. We cannot praise God. Come on, we gotta shout. Hallelujah. Shout, thank you, Lord. today that as we, man, listen, let's give into this anointing today. I, I don't, I'm not, y'all know me, I'm not a gimmicky guy, but let's, let's maintain this heart, this energy. Let's maintain this as we give today. Hallelujah. I know the holidays are coming up, but I really want you to sow into this, uh, this moment, this environment. I, I don't, I don't have gimmicks. Y'all know me. I don't have gimmicks for you, but I'm believing you that this is, a, this is special today. This is a special moment. As we give today, we're giving for harvest today. Okay, that's gonna be in your, I hope you go to sleep with that in your mind. There's a harvest on the way. I hope you go to sleep and you cannot get this out of your mind, out of your heart. There's a harvest on the way. Yes. Oh, yes. Come on, yes. Yes, and we're not laboring in our own strength. I had to learn that this week. We're not laboring in our own yes, ability. Yes. We're not laboring in our own talent or in our own wisdom. We're laboring in his name. Thank you, Jesus. There is a harvest. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Oh, we love you, God. There's a harvest on the way. I know y'all started this song. Hallelujah. But I'm not. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, man, God is so good. I'm excited to give today. We're giving for the harvest. We're giving for our future. We're giving out of obedience to the Lord. Following righteousness. Come on. Some of us are giving tithes and offerings. You know how it goes. I just want to stay in this moment because this is so special. I love you, Jesus. All right, I'll stop. Um, there's a harvest on the way. I love Jesus so much. All right. We haven't done this one in a long time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all ready? You got your gift. Let's stand. We're going to do two things at once. I'm going to, we're going to receive the offering, and I'm also going to give the benediction. Um, ready. I mean, if you know the song, you can sing it. I believe it's almost here. I believe it's almost here. Alright, alright. Hold up. 
we late. Let's pray. We'll, we'll, we'll pray and then we can sing. <laughs> I don't want to hold you hostage. <laughs> Where's my gift? Um, yes, Lord. Father, we thank you so much for the ability to give to you. We pray that you have received these gifts today. Some of us are giving time and obedience to you. Some of us are giving time and offering. Some of us are giving offering. But Lord, we ask that you receive whatever it is as we do it in faith. Thank you for the harvest. We will be laborers with you. We love you so much, Jesus. And Father, I pray for these people here, God, that as they go throughout this week, that we pray safety over their life. We pray wisdom. We pray your protection. We thank you in advance for your protection, because the word says that you never leave us nor forsake us. So we thank you for that. We pray against all downing, all spirits that would try to bring us down during the holidays. We pray that we would have joy this season. Not because of a date, but because of who you are. We thank you for that, Lord. We release this, and I bless these people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. So you're officially dismissed. You can uh, release your, or present your offering to the Lord. If you have a credit card, our beloved minister Christian is uh, in the back with the credit card swipe machine. Please make sure you do fill out an envelope if you are giving uh, via credit card. Hallelujah. And give somebody a hug. Tell them happy harvest day. I don't know. If you're doing credit card, still fill out the card. Yes. I see a new day dawning. We love you.